Agus Michael. I love you. I know. I can go slow ahead. Come on down and chump some of this shit. Just some scary movie. You like scary movies? Uh huh. What the hell is this? This is for Brody. <laughs> we came, we saw, we kicked its ass. Beetlejuice. 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 Showtime. So we're live. We're live. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Nerdy Up North podcast. It's a tiny podcast and it's hosted by Northern Nerds. I am one of your hosts, Sam. And I am the other host, Paul. Hopefully, you can hear me and see me and all things light and beautiful. I know we have been having a few technical issues over the last few days, especially with a lot of the, um, like, say, the, the equipment. So if there's any audio problems, let us know in the chat, please. Um, but tonight is a special night. We do have two beautiful guests joining us this evening. We've got the darling of the Nerdy Up North uh, Discord, the Queen Mother herself, uh, the <laughs> one who gives birth to all the kids. We've got <laughs> love the lovely Sarah. And we will be having none of this bullshit that Sarah is the longest episode now. That is no. truly down to Lee because we can't shut the, the hobo up. <laughs> um, and we are joined by the the boobalicious, the most beautiful lady in this world. Delicious. One of my favorite people who I often offend, not even on purpose. Uh, the beautiful, the vibracious, the lovely Emma. Yeah, you get away with a lot of things, Paul Watson. <laughs> I, I, I could try and get away with more, Emma. If you weren't a married woman, I'll just say that. But that's a... <laughs> but yes. And and I haven't said this for a while. And hello to all the mothers out there. And happy Easter, everyone. Oh, happy Zombie happy. Jesus Day. Happy Sorry. Zombie Jesus Day. The day that happy Jake Astara. was the day that Jake was born or, or risen, whichever <laughs> whichever is the law these days in the nerdy up north aircraft. Just uh, a few little announcements will get out the way as well. Facebook, mm -hmm. are a bell end. Full stop. <laughs> um, they're ca causing me so much aggro. So if you haven't followed the new Nerdy Up North backup uh, page, just in case, please do. It will give me less heart palpitations. Um, also as well, just like not going to start the podcast on the sad note, but I do want to make reference because I did get some sad news today and it has hit me harder than I was expecting. One of my close friends from, well, say close, like we were close, but as with life, you do move move on and people like come and live out your lives, but you always kind of like have them people with you. Um, She passed away over the weekend and yeah, it's, it's a little bit tough, a little bit thing, but I don't want to dwell on it. I want to celebrate her more than anything because she would have liked that. She is one of the most partiest, craziest and badass uh, women I ever met. She, she is the only woman that terrified me when i was in the borough um <laughs> on one of my birthdays she threatened me uh with a battery said you will lick this battery or i will punch you <laughs> and i've never been so scared Sounds in my like life her. um but yeah so um like i said i just want to say was... i really do gonna miss you susan so thank you for being a part of my life she was a character mm -hmm. yes so that's out the way so sammy do you want to take it away what are we doing? Are we going straight into this? Well, or do em we are we Emma's never experienced it. Oh my god, has she not? No. <laughs> oh my oh. god, what's oh. I feel like I'm being set up for failure here. <laughs> yes. Maybe. You think I would do that to you? <laughs> yes. Yes. yes, that would be <laughs> it. <laughs> I just mm -hmm. uh, just got something to ask you, and it's it's so mm -hmm. so hard and I uh, like, just wanna know how he's doing and what he's been watching. Right. Now there you go. Did you Come crawl on, inside what? yourself a little bit there, Emma, as well? As I do it every time I see it, Absolutely. I die a little bit inside. <laughs> um, no, what you've been watching, Emma? What you've been watching this week? Uh, so we just, like me and my husband, um, just finished The Gentleman. Mm -hmm. which, the Gentleman, which was absolutely outstanding. It was brilliant. Um, absolutely loved every single second of it. It was mm -hmm. Guy Ritchie at his best. To be honest, um, I, you know, really can't say anything else other than that. 
brilliant characters, I... well written. Just from, yeah. like we binged it, and normally we watch a couple episodes, and the last three episodes of it, it grips you. And we mm-hmm. were opening them yeah. up like me and Nick were up oh. till about half half one in the morning, saying we've got to finish it. We can't not go to yeah. bed and know the outcome. Oh, uh, yeah. I haven't it, had a series like that in so long. Oh, it's yeah. so good, and it just you, like I don't know about you, uh, Watson, but I sort of expected the ending, but then didn't expect the ending at the same time. It was, mm-hmm. you know, it was a bit up in the air for me, but I really, really, really enjoyed it. Yeah. I, I, the, I thought the ending was a little bit more telegraphed because it was a clever show, but it was the only outcome that you you could have expected. But yeah, absolutely. And, yeah. and, and to say I got chills there because that's the first time in probably about five years that someone's actually called us Watson instead of Paul. <laughs> I'm going back to me teenage years I now. <laughs> I called you. I actually called you Watson on the stream the other day, knowing that Emma was coming on when you were on Twitch. All right. And I was like, when say, Watson running, I was. Like, I mean, to be fair, that's where you are lying because I have been on the podcast within the last five years. And I'm pretty sure every single time I'm on, I call you Watson. Possibly, but like, say, <laughs> I've done that many pe- podcasts, my brain's just a mush with everything that we do. <laughs> you really, it really just get back there. You were like, like, oh. I was like, Watson, get fucking hell. Do you want me to be a grown up and call you Paul? No, no, I, I never want you to be a grown up, Emma. I, you've always been a little, little Emma. Oh, that sounds, uh, well, in pizzazz. That sounds a bit weird. Um, that sounds weird. <laughs> it's all right. Oh, yes. We pizzazz. were 16 when we first met. It's good. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll not tell any stories uh, just no. yet. No. No. <laughs> so, yes. So, Sarah, what have you, you been watching? Job. <laughs> oh, well, I get stuck behind. Um... Uh, with babies on my knee quite a lot of the day now, so I've had massive watching um, going on the last few weeks. I've, I've watched all of Picard. Mm-hmm. I've watched um, Prodigy. I've watched American Gods. Oh, right. um, oh Sarah, I've, you've been on one, haven't you? I've, I've, I've probably been on one. Um, I've also started watching the original Unsolved Mysteries with Robert Stack from like oh, the early 90s. Yes. I'm oh my God, I, I yes. think I just love them. I love oh. the current one that's on um, Netflix. So I've been watching it was the all old right. stuff. Yeah. The the old oh, stuff. God, Robert, I fucking love Robert Stack. Oh. His fan club follows me on Twitter. Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, stop um, name dropping. Every time she <laughs> name drops, I'm going to do it. I mean, he is <laughs> he is very much dead. Um, oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Got it in there because on this movie I can't do that. Oh. Um, the, did you notice though on the original ones a lot of amnesia in the eighties and nineties? Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> a very strange thing to like everyone had amnesia. It was because of don't... the copious drug amount of <laughs> drugs that was available <laughs> yeah. in the eighties. I don't like remember this... buying this box with a skeleton in it. Mm. <laughs> Bought it in Wisconsin. Maybe it was Ohio. <laughs> I just don't know. <laughs> I do love that. Me and Anth go back and watch them sometimes. There's like Bradley Cooper's a, a, an actor in there in one of them. Ryan, not Ryan Reynolds. Mm. Um, oh, the Dawson. He's mm-hmm. been in one. Mm. So you can like find all these like movie stars who started in an amazing. <laughs> just a quick question because you mentioned a show that I, I kind of love but hate it at the same time. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> How did you find American Gods? Not just because you fancied Gillian Anderson, but uh, what well, was she was only in the first season, but I still watched the last two. Yes. <laughs> did you Did you enjoy it? Um, I kind of got to the point of I thought I was watching it just to try and get to the end of it. Mm, I wanted yeah. to know what happened. Yes. Like um, especially season three. Mm-hmm. Um, it wasn't. I think if it started with the story of season three, I wouldn't have continued. No, because mm. that was because after season one, Brian Fuller left, and it kind of went a mm. bit here. Why? Um, re- very recommend to read the book American Gods. Mm-hmm. I know I see it every time we've, we've done a review on it as well. Um, mm. many moons ago, many many moons ago. But moons yes, ago. over there, right over there. <laughs> uh, and podcast and pod, podcast <laughs> issue one. But yes, um. <laughs> It's a very good book. It's like breathtaking the stories, the characters, especially if you like anything mythology. It, it's so interesting. Oh. Um, the first season got it kind of right, but then divulge and took and thought, oh, these characters are more interesting. Give them more story time than they've got in the book. Mm. Uh, yeah. Like the leprechaun, mm. uh, he died pretty quick in the book. Spoilers. Yeah, I was, I was uh, enjoying his character. Mm-hmm. Um. Oh, yes. <laughs> Makes us want to go, the leprechaun. The, the <laughs> leprechaun. <laughs> yes. I'm a little leprechaun. leprechaun. <laughs> yes. What about you, Sammy? What have you been watching? 
of the, um, of the, the, the leprechaun. <laughs> we are doing Wayne's World soon as well, so don't worry. Um, <laughs> um, well, I've been... Camera too. <laughs> Fear. <laughs> what well, have you been watching this week? Um, Other what than porn and your, dodgy, and your dodgy wrist. What did we do? What did, what did we do for monsters that, this week? Hotel Hell. No, 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 that was last uh, week. George or Romero. Oh, George Romero. I've been watching I a lot of... I thought that was tomorrow. Of... <laughs> yes, but that... <laughs> no, that a... is tomorrow, but I recorded on Thursday. Ah, right. <laughs> um, but I've been watching a lot of George Romero documentaries. Um, Invincible is back mm-hmm. um, every Friday. It is fucking immense. The series is just so good. And we are almost finished the last airbender. Oh, right. uh, I just... I fucking love that. Mm-hmm. so much makes us just want to go and jump straight back into the cartoon as soon as we like finished an episode and i'm like there's a reason you're turning it off sam <laughs> you're tired you need to go to sleep Pleasure. i still need yeah. to watch the live action like mm. oh it's so good so faithful and oh suko i just love him so much i just want to <laughs> give that guy just a big cuddle he just needs a big cuddle um, it's it's really good, Sarah. I kind of recommend it, especially if you're like familiar with a cartoon. You'll oh, just yeah. get you'll get so many vibes from it. Be like, oh, look at that, and look at this, and they go into a little bit more detail as well, especially mm-hmm. on Ang's hometown. And oh, I really, really am enjoying it. Cool. I, I, I've not been watching that much. Like, say, uh, the gentleman that me and Emma touched on as well. I'll not go over that too much. Uh, sorry to say, guys, Moon Sa- Moon Signers hasn't started up again, so I've got no oh. more Moon Signer gods for you. Oh, uh, sick man. So God damn, God damn them hillbillies! Um, damn but... you for getting me interested. <laughs> it's an interesting show. The premise is flaw- flawless. What can I say? People making it illegal whiskey, then recording it and showing America that they won't get arrested. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's it's all going to end well. But yeah, um, I have been on a Dexter kick again. So we be, we are up oh. to season f- season six now with Dexter. So um, that's the thing. But no, other than that, we watched Ghostbusters. And again, go back and watch our thoughts on Ghostbusters. That's where that I get Even though I enjoyed it, I, I am a bit sad because I felt like I slagged it off a lot on that podcast. So. No, I, I don't think you did. You just give an initial reaction. And then you know as well as mm-hmm. anyone how much reactions change the amount of times that you watch something. Mm-hmm. It was just initial reaction. I just mm-hmm. want to say hello to my podcasting partner. Nice of you to join us. All Hi, right. John. Uh, the chat. Well, my scotch mate. I know you're there. You're there. You're there. <laughs> so, yeah. She yeah. says, "Damn the man, save the empire." Damn the man. Oh. Damn the T-shirt, Dan. She was she, she was showing off a T-shirt. She wasn't flashing everyone. Sorry. <laughs> Come on, calm down. Come on, calm down. Um, <laughs> they didn't. They didn't hear the conversation beforehand, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Um, do you do do you do your lovely disclaimer then, Sammy? Yes. Well. Everything discussed in today's episode is our opinions and our opinions alone. If you'd like to discuss anything from today's episode, please come and join us on the Facebook page, the Discord, or the comment section mm-hmm. where we can have an open discussion. But what we won't have is anyone coming for us and telling us our opinions are wrong. We can all agree to disagree in fandom. So mm-hmm. let's keep it fun, keep it kind, and keep the toxic behavior out of her nerdism yes and just to get a cheap plug in as well if you want yeah. to buy a t-shirt like sarah's got and you can go to <laughs> bleeding marvelous's uh, website or facebook page uh she has a lot of good array of t-shirts nerdy t-shirts on offer so buy a t-shirt from dan that's an endorsement from <laughs> paul i i love that <laughs> did you give a thumbs up at the end i didn't yes, see that i did yes <laughs> yeah oh, brilliant brilliant <laughs> I'm going to buy a load of them and take the holiday winners. Yes, very comfortable. Um, She says yes, Sarah, so she sees it. Um, Right, before we get into Empire Records, Mm -hmm. you know what I like to do before we get into the the discussion of it? The taglines. Yes. The setup. She's getting quite aggressive in these later episodes now, Sammy. is like, I I want want it this way. It's good. I want it Sam's (laughs) way. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) From day one, it has been my way. (laughs) Have you not figured that one out yet? No, it's only took us three years to think, fuck, I've got no control of this at all. (laughs) She's so bossy. Yes. Maybe you that's maybe, that. maybe maybe maybe, maybe maybe that's me king now getting bossed by Sammy. It's waved on from Sammy's mom to Sammy now. <laughs> it's like Stockholm syndrome. It's like it's finally kicked in. Oh, Carol. It's in. <laughs> oh, Dawn, she hears her name, she comes a call, and let's just leave her be. Oh. Um, 
She's right. Like, I'll Tag hold a cum, don't worry, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Taglines. Mm-hmm. Yes. Can you guess what the main one was? Damn the man! <laughs> save Damn the, the man, save the empire. <laughs> Second one, up oh. until midnight. Up yeah. until midnight, yes. <laughs> yeah. Are you ready? They're selling music. But they're not selling out. (laughs) (laughs) The only ones that didn't sell out in the 90s, just saying. (laughs) Yeah, the music is the glue of the world. It holds it all together. Right. And the last one, which Mm -hmm. I think actually is my favourite. What's with today? Mm -hmm. Today. (laughs) Today. Yay. Today. Today. That's, they are the taglines. I think they are fucking fantastic. <laughs> Especially they're selling music, but not selling out. <laughs> oh, this movie, I like let's let's be honest, it can't be any more nineties. This is basically oh, it's everything. So nineties. It's the nineties movie. <laughs> like fuck Jurassic Park, fuck Forrest Gump. Um anything this was that came a movie out the nineties. Yes. Uh, yeah. It's so nice. It's such a nineties soundtrack. It's just mm-hmm. it's fantastic. The soundtrack soundtrack is fucking great. Yeah. Mm. It is one of the best soundtracks out there. I'll give it that. Uh the the due it deserves. Um the always the thing that does surprise me about this as well. It's quite an inclusive movie as well. Like it mm-hmm. doesn't just like if you think about music, it'll be like all oh, all these um like prima donnas. It's not like um yeah. shall we say high fidelity style where it's like uh, the same characters talking about the same type of genre of moves, yeah. music and having the same taste. They've got people who love rock. They've got people who love soul. They've got people who love bit of bit of everything. Teeny bop. Yeah. It, it's quite interesting to see, and. Everyone kind of had these type of friend groups as well, because I know, like, again, this is going to sound like a, a, a quite a weird comparison. This is very much quite similar la- long lines to The Breakfast Club. This is the 90s yeah. version mm. of The Breakfast Club. Mm-hmm. Except yeah, from na- that does make sense, yeah. Except from none of these fuckers were in detention, because none of these <laughs> fuckers would turn up. Except from Liv Tyler, possibly, because, like, see, she was a bit yeah. uh, goody two shoes. And, who, and just, just to get this away, so, so everyone feels better, she was 17 in this movie, so he's allowed to think that. It's okay. Uh, just... She was old enough, people. <laughs> yes. Lee, it's okay. You're not going to be put in the bin. Well, uh, there, would have, there would have been trouble on the set anyway, because if anyone acted themselves up, Coyote Shiver was her stepdad. Yes. So, <laughs> yeah, which is really awkward. Yeah. It's really fucking weird. It's so awkward. But yes, so uh, Sammy's touched on it. Probably is the greatest soundtrack beyond two other films. I would say is better. The only other two soundtracks I would say is better than this. And again, mm-hmm. I'll go on there. Lost Boys. Mm, yeah. And yeah. and Watchmen. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'd argue the crow as well. The crow is just the cure um, on repeat, so I can't really give the cure uh, the the crow too much. Wow, <laughs> what's what's your problem with the cure? <laughs> it's just one song <laughs> looped, isn't it? Really though, but yeah. <laughs> one started. thing, I, one thing about the soundtrack though, I don't think there's enough of the actual music used in the movie on the on soundtrack. The soundtrack, it yeah, is, I, I, that I was, as well. I was very sad in my youth, and I actually counted. I went through the credits and I counted how many songs were used, and there was about forty-five, if I remember rightly. Yeah, yeah. there's only I've twelve or thirteen yeah. songs. Yeah, Ooh. I agree. On the actual CD. I was... I was the same, obviously, you know, when it was all CDs and stuff like that. And mm-hmm. obviously now you can get it on Spotify. You can get all these different playlists. Yeah. Mm. That obviously people have made with all of the songs on as mm-hmm. opposed to the actual official soundtrack one, which is slightly better. Mm. Wasn't, mm. wasn't there a, like an alternative one that came out like not too long ago, a few years, like maybe like a 10 year anniversary. I know there was a, a like a there recut was. with more Rex Manning in the movie. Uh, version with the most disgusting scene ever with rex manning in yes that came out on an anniversary (laughs) one (laughs) apparently there is like somewhere on a cutting room floor loads and loads of footage of warren and his sister oh really Uh uh-huh well Mm -hmm. warren who only until today i realized what he said his name was Mm mm-hmm Warren Beatty. Warren Beatty? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, come it's on. I've never fucking heard the Beatty part. I only ever heard the Warren part, and I went, ah, oh, his name's actually not Warren. <laughs> That's why when he's screaming, I mean, no, I don't don't Warren. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's a lord on the cutting room floor of him and his sister. Right. Well, it's like, oh. interestingly, on the cutting room floor, there's also obviously cut reels and cut parts from Toby Maguire being in it. Yes. Andre. Um, Andre. And he obviously, he asked to, to be 
cut out of it because he was uh, struggling with a, an alcohol addiction at the time and uh, checked himself into rehab. All right. Did not know that. It's weird if you go and look on, uh, if you go and Google Empire Records and look at the mm. cast list, he's there. Yeah. And the cast still list actually is in the credits of my version yeah. as well. Probably still gets paid, just, so... That's... You'll be getting residuals <laughs> for that. It's fine. Yeah. It's good. Toby did good. <laughs> so can you remember your yeah. first time in watching this movie? I know we're going back. Like, like, say, like, Because we're not that old, really, are we? But yes. Um... I mean, I'm only 25, so, you know, it was only last year. <laughs> but if you're 25, then so am I. <laughs> To be fair, your bra's probably all 25, but that's about it. But yeah. Oh, uh, oh, oh. <laughs> Rude. <laughs> but yes, um, I can remember, because I think I saw it on DVD. It was, I think it was around the time I watched Mall Rats. So I think I watched Mall Rats first, then I watched uh, this, because I'm sure there was an advertisement because you know when like videos and dvds used to have like t t movie trailers before you watch mm -hmm. the uh, watch the film and there was yeah. a trailer on the video for mall rats and then there's a trailer for uh empire records on the same one can't remember the film but it just went mall rats looks interesting and i was like oh this like this looks class like empire records why have i not heard anything did it get a cinema run out because i ordered to go straight to dvd or straight to it vhs bombed at the VHS. cinema right yeah. It absolutely bombed at the cinema apparently when it was um, released, mm -hmm. um, and then kind of it was one of those films that kind of rose up to be a bit of a, mm -hmm. you know, a, a bit of a legendary nerd culture film. It was, <laughs> yeah, I can see why though. It was like very much of its generation of its time, yeah. like especially mm -hmm. like let, let's just take a moment and talk about the clothing in this movie. Like, oh. like the lack of skirts. <laughs> I mean, as a as a forty year old, I'm sorry, but those skirts, yeah. But that's not what you were saying when you were in your but early as a, as a 17 year old i was fully wanting to wear those skirts yeah yeah i think they definitely had the legs like Rene zegweger and uh like oh, live tyler's legs in this movie kind of sold it on themselves for miles and, type and miles yeah yeah <laughs> renee zegweger in this movie is just fucking unreal but we'll get into that in a bit <laughs> i remember watching this with a group of friends i had before my college group of friends you had friends, friends before, before us Jinx. You, you know I did. <laughs> um, I know, it was really rude of us, wasn't it? I mean, you won in the end. <laughs> you're stuck with us. saving yourself for us. <laughs> you, you, you're stuck with us. So. <laughs> oh, um, damn it. it was, but it was around the time of like the mall rats time and this mm. kind of like came alongside it. It's like mall rats and this comes like hand in hand for some reason. Yeah. Um, and it just became everything. Like to it's one fair, of those though, movies if, where it had I was mm -hmm. going to say, if you watch Mall Rats and uh, this back to back, you could think it was like a Mall Rat sequel in a way, just with yeah. different characters. Yeah, just in a different absolutely. part of the di different part of the mall is this mm -hmm. like record shop. It's just outside of it or something. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, it just became everything, and this was the movie of like my life like and then eventually seeped over into the friends that i did make at college and they were just as enthusiastic about this movie as i was to be fair though, the friends you made a, a your friends you made at college were all backward and dicks to be fair so that's fine Oi, there is two of them sitting right <laughs> yeah. here what i was about to say is i think i don't know about you guys but i think um when watching the film there is not one single character within that film that you apart from maybe rex manning that you don't really like resonate with is that there are little mm -hmm. bits of all their personalities mm -hmm. that you can kind of resonate with yeah for me there is anyway it definitely mm -hmm. felt like a lot like my friends group back at the time and even though yeah. I'm, I'm a bad mild using shit like that like we all had moments like like as the, as the film goes through because a lot of hormones a lot of emotional tangents go through this God, movie yeah. uh we pretty much done the same like the amount of times like we fell out argued kissed and made up some some of us kissed literally and made and that up was but, just um, me and Watson. yeah i was gonna say <laughs> we've never fallen out <laughs> in how how many years we have never fallen out it, it was everyone been. else around us. Was everybody, yeah, everybody <laughs> crumbling around. Everyone else around us and me and her were like, nah. It's because everyone <laughs> had hormones and, and we didn't know where to put our hormones. That was the problem. Um, but I was making you a sister, Sam. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, what about you, Sarah? What was your first experience with, uh, with The Ooh. Empire? I think I must have seen it about a year or two after its release. Um. Mm. You know, I I was at the time I was going to like gigs twice a week at you, either of the Newcastle universities. Mm -hmm. You know, um, 
back when the gigs were only like a fiver and yeah. didn't care who I was going to see. I just yeah, those just days. See them. <laughs> um, you know, I was I was buying Melody Maker and NMB every week, and yeah. music was just <laughs> a huge mm-hmm. part of my life, and it was just inevitable that I crossed paths with this movie. Really, yeah. Um, yeah. I I still watch it twice a year at least. Oh yeah, yeah. it's my go to. It's yeah. one of my go tos. It's it, just it's it's one it of those movies lot. that reminds me of like good times with me with my group of friends. Yeah, like you know there was a group of four of us mainly. And um, whenever we used to stay at each other's houses, we would always watch Empire Records. Mm-hmm. Do you think this would have worked better? Because I know you said it flopped big style when it first came out at the, the cinema. Do you yeah. think this would have worked better as a TV show? Uh, no, no, I don't think so. Just, I, I I think mean, just the amount nice of... Because just the amount of characters that we had, yeah, and maybe it's not been... then, but it might now. Right. I, ju- I just wanted to understand the relationship between Lucas and Luca, sorry, and Joe. Mm. That yeah. was one kind of dynamic because the, the the hint on the it is hint like on, a father, yeah, because like it's... a father and son relationship. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I just wanted to know a little bit more detail. Deb yeah. was an intriguing character. Yes. Um, but she I went through got... all the emotions, didn't she? Bless she her. Went through yeah. fucking <laughs> everything. She had a funeral and all sorts. Yeah. Um, but I just I don't know. There's, there was enough with Liv Tyler to understand her. Yeah. Renée just... Zellweger. You well. like Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She really was. Uh, she was a, a stressed out teenager who was obviously having far too much pressure put on her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Something that we hadn't seen in Saved by the Bell with Jesse. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had to get oh, that reference that. in there. It reminds me so much. That scene reminds me so much of Jesse and Saved by the Bell. <laughs> You know, oh, it's, good. And you know what's quite interesting <laughs> though is head. you know you know what was quite interesting though with like the characters. I know we talked about the characters now. The male characters were a little bit boring, other than Lucas. Like Mark was just the typical off the wall. Mark bouncing, is amazing. Mark, Mark is everything. Yeah. Mark was the typical bouncing off the wall that comedy a, element that you have to have in this time. Four or five people we went to to college with who remind me of the character <laughs> of Mark. Yeah, I also think right that Eddie is MVP. <laughs> Eddie is oh, what? I love him. I love Eddie's Eddie. the most valuable player in this movie. Yeah. Right. Okay. Explain. Eddie's there exactly when you need him. Yeah. So he, 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 he like um. I'm gonna. I've, I've done a couple of notes on this one. Okay. <laughs> he, <laughs> <laughs> he arrives exactly when you need him to break the tension of what's currently happening. Right. Um. You know. He's he just he shows up with pizza to break the tension of what's happening in the staff room after everybody finds out Lucas got the money. <laughs> he oh no! It, it turns up after they find out she's. Uh, Renald Zeg was banging yeah. next man. Yeah, that was the yes. that, that, that was the pizza bit, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, he's not he's not creepy. He's kind of got this naivety oh, about no. him. He's like lovely. when um, when he's sitting at the table outside with Corey, and she just takes the bra off and plonks it on the table. He's not fussed about it. I know some blokes that would have kind of put that bra on their face and sniffed it. <laughs> I mean, um, it was the... You forgot it was the... <laughs> I'm looking at you, Lee. I'm looking at you down this camera. You would have sniffed that um, bra, you filthy animal. You know, he provides the perfect getaway for, for Mark with the brownies. Mm-hmm. Um... <laughs> He he just seems genuinely nice and chill and like you know the perfect the perfect role in the store as well like uh, mm-hmm. the vinyl section mm-hmm. he genuinely cares about how this person will treat the vinyl he cares that much mm-hmm. about it mm-hmm. you know it's he's lovely he's, he's just so how, sweet yeah. he is but, a good yeah. guy yeah Let, let's be honest and that let's let's call us for this beard I, I thought AJ was boring let's oh, be honest which blanket <laughs> oh, oh my god he was the AJ he was, was, he was the heartthrob. <laughs> He no, was not I that never heartthrob. Liked it, <laughs> it was, it was, you know, the good old nineties heartthrob with the, no. you know, the, the curtains I, and I'll, the grungy I'll, look. I'll, I'll say the grungy look, yeah. It I the... always hated AJ for him burning Mark CD. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that was yeah. an unnecessary mean thing to do. Yes. But um, poor Mark. <laughs> but yeah, exactly. Like, poor Mark. Poor Mark. But Mark with a K, remember. Seeing Mark yeah. go on, uh, hopped up on <laughs> brownies was just like 
again when i watch it now it's funny but i remember watching it the first time thing that's actually quite scary when terrifying uh, when Gwar Gwar was like, i had a friend who was into guar at the time as well so i found it hilarious <laughs> i just love the fact they use guar of all yeah. the bands they use Gwar. i think mark is just the best he has some of the greatest um lines to quote like if you mm -hmm. are quoting from this movie the likelihood is it's always it's one of it's gonna be a mark uh -huh, it's gonna be a Job mark <laughs> I, I, I love the bit where he just kind of like you know how, how you answer the phone Empire Records up until midnight and he just goes midnight that's <laughs> one of my go-to quotes is that one I love that. and the help me help me oh god <laughs> it's funny he's going I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start a band up and what are you going to call it Mark but I was but thinking of Mark C. but with a C, C. <laughs> not with a kid just to be all trippy and like, psychedelic and it's like <laughs> No, <laughs> and of course, Mark saves the day. He has the idea to go yes, on the news. Yeah. He does. Yeah. Mark saves it. Mark saves the, Save empire. the empire. See, without Mark, without Mark, you you don't have the empire saved. <laughs> Oh, he's such so, a great character. Certainly. I'll tear back my comment of saying all the men were boring. Just probably AJ <laughs> just, and, 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 and the other weird. guy, I can't yeah, remember his name. He was just, yeah, he was there for a heartthrob, wasn't yeah. he? He was, you mm -hmm. know, 90s heartthrob, good yeah. looking guy. What, what was In that, Sarah? Opinion. Burkle. Burgo, that's the one I can't remember oh, his name. Coyote, Coyote Shivers. Coyote Shivers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Liv Tyler's dad. Yeah. It mm. was just, it was, again, just two people that looked exactly the same, just being in for looks and really, but they, they didn't bring anything different on you. Mm. Um, I mean, he was there for, for basically the music. Mm. He was the, there for the, yeah. that, you know, epic song at the end, wasn't he? Yeah, because that's his song, isn't it? Uh -huh. He's a very problematic person in real life. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to, really to go, problematic. <laughs> to go a bit deep with you now as well. So, because we'll start, we'll go into about the characters so a bit. Soon. So soon, we'll always go deep. Always go so, Always go deep. Quick, quick as easy. That's the best. Go straight in there. Uh, God. Straight in there. No foreplay. Um, <laughs> we'll be going to loop up. <laughs> Going in dry. Oh my god, you're just as bad as him. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is why can't me and Emerson can't it. be around each other too much. That's yeah. the thing. <laughs> this is why I'm never going to be a guest ever again on the podcast. I'm going to get you all shut down. <laughs> oh, not not just yet. We've had Graham on. You're safe. It's fine. I know. You, you are. <laughs> if, we, if YouTube will let us have Graham on, it's good. <laughs> ah, well, I'm good. I'm safe. So, which anyway. characters? Like, let's talk about. 90s Sam, 90s Emma, 90s Sarah. Oh, God. Oh, which God. character <laughs> is more do you relate to back then? And then afterwards, we'll see which character you relate to now. Oh, okay, that's <laughs> okay. okay. Okay, I like that. I like that. Yes. Right. Um. So I'm gonna throw Sammy under the water with it because because both because well... she looked like she was panicking a little bit. <laughs> no, no, 90, 90s Sam would be fucking dead because she just she just yeah. Look, Look, yeah. you're agreeing. Hundred <laughs> percent. All the emotions and just being a dick yeah, to everyone. The, yeah. Yep, all, so. yep. That is totally and utterly me. <laughs> if anyone's gonna go and fucking shave their hair off, it's gonna be me. And mm -hmm. um, forty Sam is also dead because <laughs> there's no fucking difference. It doesn't change. Like I still, I am still an emotional wreck. Mm -hmm. Um, I still would shave my hair off at a drop of a hat just because it fucking annoyed us. Um, there's no difference between. 90s Sam and 40s so, 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 so if we get the 2,000 subscribers, you'll shave your head? No. <laughs> Damn you. Uh, no. What about for charity? Yes. Don't say things like that because I was just, I'm just about to Sorry. say it. Oh, to be no. fair, though, to be fair, she got her feet out last time for charity, so I think the head shaving might be... You made 20 quid for your foot pictures as well, so well done there. Um, I've been offered a lot more on Instagram for them, so... <laughs> Only what? fans. <laughs> I've got Go really on. nice tattooed feet. <laughs> what about you, Sarah? What, 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 what would we say for ninety, Sarah? For ninety, Sarah, I'll probably go with with uh, with Sam's choice of Deb. Right. Um, so he's all bleak and dark and yes, depressing I, and stuff. I, 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 I want to be the bleak, dark girl that people kind of went. Oh, I can't imagine you like that at all. Yeah. I used to hang around with all the goths, man. I can't imagine we you can giving still, them can... badges mocking people. All, all, all the charters just used to call me the freak of the corner. Right. Oh. Bless you. Dickheads. So what about what about now, Sarah? I think now Sarah's more um going with Joe. 
Right. All right. So you're 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 the man. You're the one that's fighting st- the man. <laughs> I stand back and I go, "What the fuck is going on around me?" <laughs> I have. <laughs> I wish I could play kids, the drums. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I could play the drums like Anthony Lapaglia because I would do that so much more to yes. get stress out. Seen is amazing as well with yeah. the CDC. Yes. Oh. And get these dance moves. Yeah. yeah. And it was actually him playing them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You can tell yeah, that's one thing because you know you know when someone's not really really like just hitting things yeah. enough thing, but you could tell like just I, I know they could do a clever edit and stuff, but mm-hmm. um I don't think they had Wait, that much. We're talking nineties, so there's yeah. not really that much clever editing you can do in the nineties. Hey, okay. <laughs> yeah, we're we'll not getting to the Kevin Smith style of editing yet, but yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. I'm gonna be brutally honest and probably say back then I was probably more Gina. Mm. I was probably the funny Zegwer character, trying to please everyone and just being all, like passive aggressive when yeah. being a slut and being a yeah. slut. I was a whore. Yes, I I will <laughs> like say I I like to dip the uh, my pen in any ink that was there. Uh, yes, you did. <laughs> I'm so glad you put it that way and another way. <laughs> but yes, uh, probably Gina. But probably now, uh, Lucas. I can probably say because I'm like I love his style and I love that he's kind of always got that positivity and I that's what I hope I am now but that's probably what sorry no I'll change my answer a little bit I'll be a bit of a dick mm. there I'll probably say <laughs> I, I want to be more Lucas but I'm probably a bit more Mark because just kind of both yeah yeah a bit nice. of chaotic energy but... fucking absolute manic mm-hmm. to then being like all of a sudden switch the you can switch it on and just go right and chill <laughs> yes and, and the... I don't know how the fuck you do it and, but you do, <laughs> and the plan comes together. The plan always it always works out in the end. <laughs> um, and he just goes up to random girls and kiss their feet. Um, no, 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 no. Do you know who that was? <laughs> yes, it we've was, been looking um, at the same fact pages. Yeah. <laughs> it was Michael Caulfield's uh, it's, it's daughter, daughter, isn't it? It's, yeah. 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 yeah, Maxwell Caulfield. <laughs> That's all that's his name. Yeah. I don't well, think I've went up to random. I've, I've done lots of random stuff, but I've never went up and kissed the woman's feet. <laughs> Nerd fest tomorrow could be the first. You sh- should come and see us. Uh, <laughs> don't be scaring the people off. <laughs> I want the people to be scared. Always be scared. That's fine. I, I uh, think for me, I'd have to go with this the same fit as as you, Paul. Um, mm-hmm. In the nineties, I was very, very much the Rene Zellweger um, character. More and. I would say more with... temperament than anything else. You had very much that temperament. You would blow up very easy. <laughs> absolutely. Oh, I'll, I'll openly admit it, 100%, absolutely would lose my temper in a heartbeat. Um, mm-hmm. And it was also the the insecurities. Um, mm-hmm. You know, way back in the 90s, I was a teenager, early 20s, mm-hmm. you know, and there mm-hmm. was the insecurities of then leading to... Mm-hmm. As you so nicely put it, to dip in, dip in my pen in any, any oh, ink I you could. Oh, you know, using, using my <laughs> ink for any pen that I could, kind of thing. You weren't that um, bad. And it was like an into it. Well, that was you know, the, before uni was. Um, but there Damn, was, I missed yeah, them there, was a, there was a lot of insecurities around, mm-hmm. you know, this this false confidence yeah. of you know mm-hmm. leading guys on, and you know, like she does with Rex Manning, you know, she mm-hmm. she does it because she can, and she gets her confidence and. Mm-hmm. There's a small part of me when I'm watching it thinking it's mm-hmm. because of our insecurities. Yeah. It's yeah. kind of like a false confidence that she builds up to do it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, me now, I unfortunately grew up to be very neurotic, so I'm probably more Liv <laughs> Tyler's character now. <laughs> and just put this out there Emma is not a, a speed addict. She does not no, take no, the speed no, pills. No, no, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> drugs. drugs are for mugs. <laughs> just say no. Just say no, guys. <laughs> Okay. Just a bad guy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, getting all the references out now as well. Um, for a movie that is like again can be put in one word, a cliche. That is probably the most best way to describe uh, Empire Records. Every cliche yeah. that is basically being wrote or talked about in the nineties is probably in this movie. But 100%. it is one with some actual real depth as well because it goes through topics or uh, conversations that weren't like very taboo of the time. Like, say, it's a taboo now. We talk about suicide and they're going yeah. quite de- uh, detailed about like life and death and uh, feeling that relationships as well. Like, um, having a young lady, um, like, and Liv Tyler's age, still being a virgin and talking about like losing it for the first time as well is quite 
an interesting topic, especially in the surrounding. And slut shaming as well. Again, slut shaming has been going around for many years and it still was prevalent in this movie and it's still prevalent uh, today's market, which is quite sad because uh as, you, as as we say a man could go around sleep around and be hailed as like say oh he's god's gift or he's a, he's, a, he's a hero for um like doing things that uh, if a woman d did would be uh like getting a scarlet letter be called a harlot and stuff like that where yeah. again sex positivity is not a bad thing if like it should be broadcast and again not uh we fucking celebrate it yeah that, absolutely and I think this movie does it does it on the line where it's not too condescending as well at times, but again, it 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 does flitter quite close in my view. But again, that's just yeah. probably like a male view rather than like a female view as well. I don't know how you guys felt with that. I love the scene when it all blows up, but mm -hmm. I also love the scene afterwards where all she can think about she, she in that argument she threw out all about her her promiscuous ways mm -hmm. but when she's thinking back on her in a loving way that's not where she goes mm -hmm. and she thinks about all of the the, the good parts about her is that she's brave mm -hmm. in every yeah. aspect of her life that she's a brave person so i adore that scene there Liv tyler really does do my head in in this movie sometimes <laughs> uh, it's the pout Mm -hmm. oh yes it How is oh it's just it's when she screams in joe's face as well yeah. <laughs> it's like fuck jesus well, um, such as neurotic. yeah there's yeah. a scene that is quite i wouldn't say, well i would use the words uncomfortable it is like the lived tyler and um rex manning scene Manning's. where mm -hmm. she's blue where, cheese. when when she's got him that's in the, the uh, that's the extended one man <laughs> ew when he, he, she kind of strips off into her underwear and he just goes just takes a deep breath and just undoes his trousers and that kind of freaks her out a bit as well i, well, I never like blue cheese <laughs> it's because of what he says in the in the extended one and he gets the bottle of blue cheese on the table shakes it and goes i hope you like blue cheese and that's why she runs out yeah right. Because it's gross. So it's because it's disgusting. <laughs> but the way that he just opens his trousers in the cut one mm -hmm. just makes I think, oh, this is too easy. There's yeah. no romance here. I don't There's... think I've ever seen the cut one. If I'm honest, I think I've well, only ever just, seen it. He just opens version. his trousers and just it, it's like presents mm -hmm. himself, and she freaks out and runs out. Mm -hmm. But it's just in her head, she's built up this romantic scene where he's yeah. gonna sweep her off her feet, and it's everything that she yeah. ever wanted in her first time. Mm -hmm. And he just, it's just another it's... conquest for him. Yeah, and that's, well, that's what it. gets it's, up at the. It's... It's where she displays her like naivety because you know, yeah. like you say, young girl mm. still a virgin thinks that this this rock star is gonna, you know, sweep her up. And we've all had, you know, as as young maybe younger teenage girls, you know, we've all had mm -hmm. that that I'm um, you know I'm so in love with Nick Carter from the Backstreet Boys, and if I ever met them, I would you know I I would like him to take my virginity, and <laughs> he's gonna sweep us off his. And, reality hits her and that's mm. not what happens no yeah. Agent Rockstar has probably had every woman across the world yeah. he's probably fucking riddled yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's probably absolutely riddled dirty bastard <laughs> definitely I mean he was a cool rider so <laughs> He was a cool rider. Oh God! Shit, yeah. Feel no more. <laughs> more, more. more. <laughs> so right, I just want to. One of the most interesting things I read today about this movie, and this is, I think, this is what made us think how much they actually they, like fucking cared about it. Rex Man and Day, mm -hmm. April eighth, yeah. was used because it's the day that Kirk Cobain died, right? Oh. And it was the day that music, in their mind. Died. Enter an end. A generation died. Lost and its mascot. Wanted, yeah, and they wanted to honour that Aww. day with the Rex Manning Manning Day. Day. Oh, yeah. come on, they could do better things than when it... <laughs> Yeah, right, that's why they used April 8th. And I, when I read that, it kind of like made us a bit teary. I was like, oh my that's God, really... like, that's yeah. in the cool. I, yeah, I always I remember where cool. I was when mm. when Kirk, when it was announced Kirk Cobain died. Mm -hmm. So now I will always remember that Rex Manning Day. Mm -hmm. Is the is the, the death, remembrance, death, death, death. at least uh, <laughs> remembrance of Kirk Cobain? Well, you, oh, Sammy Rexy, said she wouldn't. So she was, sexy. Rexy, Sammy will never never not get a death reference in a in a podcast. So uh, yeah, you, <laughs> the queen of death right here. The queen I'm of death it now. <laughs> Um, just to say in the chat as well earlier, Lee said for the two thousand thing instead of shaving your hair, why don't you dye your hair green for monsters? Yeah, I do that. Yep, yeah, but I don't know which hair. I don't know which hair he's talking about there, Lee. 
It's too easy. It needs like, to be a challenge. Yeah. For charity, it needs to be a challenge. Well, the charity, the, the, fucking hell. the charity things coming later in the year. Like half of it. I'm, I'm literally just it? getting yeah. my hair back after an undercut. I'm not shaving <laughs> my hair off again. Okay, 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 okay. Just saying, oh, Sammy, Sammy's against having shaven. Just saying, but that's fine. Yeah. Um, Sammy <laughs> hates charity. I'm just saying. Oh my oh. god, that's even <laughs> worse than what he said. <laughs> So, Why Sammy. is she on again? <laughs> you asked her. <laughs> you did ask her. <laughs> I, I couldn't. I couldn't do Empire Records in good faith without you here. I would kill you. <laughs> to be I fair, know you though, would. I, I, I could say the, the emotional blackmail that Sarah put us through. I, I basically bullied my way onto this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> See what we wouldn't get anywhere, Sarah. That's you, not. I it. asked you. <laughs> I don't know how he is there. The amount of stuff I do for I you I do guys. like Sarah's style, though. Sarah's getting no stickers tomorrow. Uh, no sh- no shinies for Sarah. Um, no goodies for Paul. Sorry, I'm oh, too... you're bringing cake. Oh, God. I'm bringing something. It's not cake. Um, <laughs> trying to bring it back on track now. So, uh, which, like, because there's a lot of, like, let's say moments in this thing, because like, the story is quite linear, but there's a lot of different decent, like, moments. What would you say is your highlight, though, Sarah? Like, what thing do you like, oh. look back with either fondly or just, like, laugh your tits off? Um, oh, God. <clears throat> I think it's only watched this recently as well. <laughs> I've literally just finished it. <laughs> yeah. I didn't. I didn't know if it was going to end or not because no. I had to watch it with fucking adverts. I hosted <laughs> it in the Discord for Chris and for Sonia's brother. Ah, uh, for Joe. <laughs> um. Well, I can say I'll name mine. Um, I absolutely love uh the interaction when we first meet Warren and how mm. Lucas goes into full um uh, just Terminator mode, <laughs> like uh how he knows where. Warren like Warren's every move, where he was gonna to run to, yeah. every trick he was gonna try, and it kind of like outsmart them every way. And that that's quite like you yeah. know that Lucas is is kind of like the hero of the story all the way through. But And I, I like how he didn't leave the sofa. <laughs> He's always got the cushion. <laughs> He's always carrying the cushion around, but <laughs> the, the, there is a there's an innocence to Lucas that just can't be matched. Like he he just looks so unfazed all the way through the film until when everyone tries to bail him out. But um, yeah. yeah, but the whole scene with him and Warren is just comedy gold, mm-hmm. and uh, ha- and having Mark to scream and come and break in the fourth the fourth wall, <laughs> which he did on a numerous case case. Like he's almost like he's mm. shouting to the store, but he's like shouting to the audience like. Uh, shoplifter and then <laughs> how no one helps them as well like everyone's like running commentary and stuff like that like um when Renee Zegwa's character like Jaina gets on the microphone and starts goes hey people Rex Menning fans if you look to the left you can see I was, I was stuck, one of our employees <laughs> Lucas chasing down uh run, running down the, uh, a shoplifter um but yeah how they even take the piss out of his music choices as well like you, you, why you stole the, these CDs Rap, as well metal <laughs> <laughs> Whitney Houston, Houston. I mean <laughs> early Whitney Houston was amazing um do like I do like the inter- I think the only way to describe Luca throughout this whole film is he's as cool as a fucking cucumber. Oh, yes. He really is like and he's full he, the way he thinks he's speaking philosophy when really mm-hmm. he's fucking not. not, not. <laughs> well, half the time he's just quoting lyrics from songs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Damn the man. Damn the man. He is I, the man. I do I do like his um, little like, you know, I can really save the day if I uh Take this money to Atlantic City. I can't yeah. save the day. What gets me? Letting it ride. Oh yeah. my God. Letting it ride. What gets me throughout this whole film? Nobody calls him up on his bullshit. Yeah. Not one person sits there and goes, What the fuck did you do? He doesn't explain himself. Yeah. I don't think he ever explains himself throughout he doesn't, the whole thing no. until the very end where he goes, I thought I knew what I was doing. Yeah. And that kind of gives a little bit of a hint. But if he had just said, Listen, I found the contract. I thought I could get the money. I thought I could do X, Y, and Z, and it all fell through. But he doesn't, and nobody asks him. And then everyone's just being really nice about it. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I don't get it. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, baby's joining us. Uh, 
We have oh, a Zach that needs feeding. <laughs> we've, got, we've, got the, we've got the youngest member on the team now. It's fine. Hello. <laughs> no, no, he's not yeah. the youngest. The girl's the youngest. <laughs> All right. Um, but yes, um, like the whole look with Lucas is is just hilarious. Like he's all like the st the beginning start where it all kicks off and. Uh, you see him going through, and you don't really understand what's happening. You see him going through a lightning city, and he's like hitting everything. Like he's like the luckiest bastard that's ever walked in that thing. He like he hits on it, <laughs> uh, hits on a northern word, shall we say? I want to use a nudgy. Uh, he hits a nudgy, um, hits jackpot on that. Uh, he throws crabs, and it, and he's it, like literally, literally hitting everything. Everything's coming out like uh, gold for him, and then he makes he makes the one bet too too far yeah, because let it ride because to be fair if he didn't we wouldn't have a fucking movie it wouldn't be <laughs> it would, it would, the story would have been over right there and then it would have been, been very short end, end empire credits. save end credits <laughs> roll score but um what i want to know what that's why i mentioned before about the tv show why i thought it would be quite interesting because you've hit the nail on the head though sammy I think the interesting stories before is what kind of shit did he get up to where they just didn't give a fuck what he'd been th like, through. It's, it's like the kind of accept, yeah. ec just either accepted or expected him to do some wacky yeah. shit like this. Yeah, because like, it is like, what did you do? What did you... And he just leaves it at that. He doesn't push it or anything because it's like, <laughs> oh, well, it's <laughs> Lucas. Of course he's done something. Nobody calls him up on his bullshit mm -hmm. at all. And I wonder if that's something to do with his relationship with Joe. Mm-hmm. Or they just know what kind of person he is, but we don't. No. I don't know what no. kind of person he is. To mm -hmm. me, it almost seems like he's kind of trying to get away from his past. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but this is just kind what of is like his a, past, Sarah? His, what is it? I know, I know. That no, that's that. I'm with you on that. What is his past? He's what trying to get away from it, but you don't think that's falling off the wagon. Do not think that's the genius about the whole film? It doesn't. Yeah. Doesn't go into that. It leaves like, you guessing. Your own it leaves mind you thinking. How many? How many years later down the line, and we're still asking the same fucking question exactly. that was probably <laughs> asked in 1995? I'm, st I'm still so wondering why really the fuck. That's a good sign of a f good movie. I'm still wondering why yeah. the fuck AJ super glued them quarters to the floor. I'm not some little tow rug that's stealing CDs. Oh I have never seen this girl get so fucking passionate about a film before. <laughs> We've had her on for Dexter, for The Crow, and you you, you are on one today, Mrs. <laughs> to be fair, though, get her on the next filed episode. <laughs> <laughs> Sammy, you were shocked by the Dexter one. Oh, that, we were you scared. Came of... on with a fucking knife, man. <laughs> we thought this we were going to be just dead. Came on with a cushion. Yeah. <laughs> cushion and a baba. That's fine. That's that's oh, yeah, that's, that's Sarah's, be, you, Sarah's you tagline of... now. She comes with a cushion and a bag. Uh, if she was an action figure, a, cu a cushion and a baba. Oh yeah, <laughs> with a knife in the background. <laughs> It's retractable Dexter mask. Um, oh, bless her. Um, um, and now we've got fucking Lee about? dressing like dressing up like any character that we fucking have him on now. I don't know what we expect of <laughs> Lee now. It's terrifying. What we what were you doing with these people? <laughs> what did you do more like? Because every time you see a Lee, you should do something. He could fucking paint himself green and turns himself into a fucking Ninja Turtle. Sorry, baby. I know I shouldn't be swearing in front of you. I apologize. He can't hear. It's fine. I've got your headphones on. Okay. Yeah. I, just, I feel very uncomfortable knowing there's a child there and I'm like, Evan and Jeff. That's fine. Sammy, they're going to be hearing it from other people. They're going to hear it from Sammy. They're going to learn he's worse. He's going to learn, learn sooner or later. Okay. Oh, yes. That's all right. If mum says so, then that's fine. <laughs> But yeah, um, I was going to ask what like what's your favourite song in this film, other than the end end song Ooh. where they're singing it. But oh. um... Jen Blossoms, the Jen Blossoms, um, oh, hear it from you is oh. one of my all time favourite songs ever. It's on every playlist just, that I've ever yeah. made ever. It's on all of Ant's playlists, like if any category that's in there. But you know what it always makes us think of every time it comes on? Fucking mm. plaid shirts. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> Again, that's a very just... 90s thing, though, isn't it? Like, you've got, isn't you know, it? You've got AJ... your 90s legends wearing plaid shirts. You know, Kurt Cobain, Eddie Vedder. It was a yeah. very, very 90s thing. Mm -hmm. Where do you think this was set? about the three that are currently in my wardrobe. <laughs> oh, I've got fucking hundreds. Where do you think this was set? Oh, um, Illinois, well, wasn't it? 
Somewhere yeah, like that, yeah. Illinois, yeah. Oh, was it? I didn't know if it had like an actual place. I never really paid well, that much a, attention to that part. It was close to Atlantic City, so it must have been like a, I like don't a know yeah. where Atlantic <laughs> City is. <laughs> we'll take you one day, Sammy, and you can do I a don't Lucas. Know the America. <laughs> you can just hit, hit it. Uh, we'll do the we'll do the uh, Blues Brothers Drive, and you can do the um, like I say the the Lucas um, losing streak. And that's what is exactly what will happen if you take me anywhere near your gambling. <laughs> I am the unluckiest savage going. That's fine. <laughs> but if we can go back to favourite moments before we get into the songs, because mm-hmm. um, one of my favourite moments is a Mark moment, and it is a very simple moment. And it's when Mark talks to the camera and says, mm-hmm. we cannot be sad. Yeah. No, no, not today. Not today. <laughs> and then he comes whizzing down the stairs. And <laughs> oh, I just... I love that scene so much. I, I just love how it's <laughs> Yes. Oh, yes. and that leads into another great song. Um, yeah, see, <laughs> come, the, the moments you know of songs come hand in hand in this movie. I'm surprised we didn't start the episode with ma 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 Mm-hmm. Where she's just going, when she can hear us saying Vito, but it's just ouch, ouch, <laughs> and then she gets to the well, actual thing. That's one of my favorite moments. Is like, I mean, there's so many to pick from, but one of my favorite moments is when they've got, um, what was it? I, I want money playing and chasing over the, the thing. Not just any money, just, just money. money. <laughs> money. Lots of money. Lots of money. Lots of money. Um, How amazing is Renée Zellweger in this movie? Though? She, she's fab. She's, like, she, let's be honest, dude, she very rarely makes a bad movie. That, that, I, I, oh, wouldn't, I, yeah, I disagree with those. Have you seen most of the Bridget Jones movies? I'm not, I've got fan no, base. Hey. Like saying, like saying, I'm not going to start this and that. I'm not, I'm not having, I'm not having the Bridget, Bridget, Bridget Jones. Jones fans coming after me after this podcast. I, but, I really like the first wrong, one. People. I love a bit of Bridget Jones. The books were much better than the films. But well, I'm sorry, the second and the third film, there was no need for it. But she played a really good oh. Judy Garland as... She, she did. She did. I honestly have I, my opinion. I always oh, no no fussy baby. Don't go to sleep. So. Um, <laughs> I I have I have a lot of time for her, and it probably does stem because of my love of her in this movie. I think she's got a fucking fantastic. But I wish she used that voice in Chicago though. Sure. That is. See, I loved her in Chicago. Mm. I see, but I voice. think. I think she just needed like that. That the way she talks in this is the way she sings. Mm-hmm. And I actually really like that about her, but that again, it's a very, it's a voice of the nineties. Yeah. That's a, a singing voice of of a nineties female singer, and like, mm-hmm. so I can I, uh, I'm just she talking myself out of it now. Yeah. <laughs> she hundred percent makes that song at the end of the film. Yeah. Like, oh. When you yes. listen to the the Coyote Shivers version, it's a good song, but yeah. she elevates that song to a mm-hmm. whole different mm-hmm. level. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It definitely sure. needs yeah. the female Hi. voice in there. I think. Yeah. yeah. Yes, it just added a little bit more, and again, closing the movie down as well. I thought it was a nice finish, and like everyone kind of got the the happy endings in a way. Yeah, like yeah. Um, and that that's probably the only unrealistic thing in this movie when everyone start getting like the happy endings. Like, um, AJ got the girl, Joe got the the music store, and seems to have got uh, Rex Manning's uh, Rex Manning's uh, manager as well. Manager, yeah. Um, <laughs> Again, I, I, her I know. eyes. Mm. <laughs> I think I've... Debbie Mazar's eyes are always like that. Though. Mm. Yeah, she beautiful eyes. She very always cat-like. plays. A... She always looks like a cat. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She's she... like very cat. Is she in? Co- is she's in? Um... What's it? The, the good. F- she's Batman. in Goodfellas. She's uh, she's in Batman. Yeah, she no, is. She, she's in Goodfellas. Yes, she's in Goodfellas. She's kind of like a bit character, isn't she? She always like kind of is mm-hmm. there somewhere in the background. She's one of those characters that you always notice, but you never remember her name. Yeah, I think um, she was amazing as Spice mm. in in the Batman movies. I can't remember which one was um, Two Face in again. Oh, oh that was a, um, that, that was a Jim Carrey one. It was a shit yeah, one. Yeah, that's forever. the one that I, I am. I am. Is it Batman Forever? To... Batman Forever. Oh. Yes. Where yeah, Drew, I'm Drew, trying to get where Drew Barrymore played Sugar. 
Yeah. yeah. Yes. I am trying my hardest to get that one reviewed. <laughs> we've I covered can't... all the rest of them. Well, there's been just a theme. Saying. Just saying, we've not reviewed. <laughs> I don't think we've reviewed a Jim a Jim Carrey movie. Just saying, that might be out of oh, device because oh, I can't stand the man. Uh, yeah. I'm not. See, I'm. I'm with you. I'm not a fan of Jim Carrey unless he's actually seriously acting rather than comedy acting. Mm. So you know, spotless. Um, what you call it? Um, spotless mind. Spotless uh, mind. Yeah. Eternal yeah. sunshine of the spotless Eternal mind. Eternal sunshine. Yeah. He's That's great it. in that. Mm. We. Well, yeah, I really like number twenty-seven as well. Even though twenty-three. Green, just... 20. Number twenty-three. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Sam is dyslexic. Dyslexic with numbers as well. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Say go. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Paul. Good I'm save. I'm just surprised it's a film she's seen, if I'm honest. Oh, she's getting better. We're getting better. We've, we've actually found I've, some. I've... We've found someone that's seen less movies than Sammy as well. Oh no! Li- oh, who? Li- little tiny Chris in the Discord. We have to talk to him like this because he's little and tiny. He's seen fuck all. He hasn't even seen the Terminator movies, and he refuses to watch them because it's annoying Lee and it's hilarious. You've been but... watching Taskmaster, Paul. Yes. <laughs> Little Alex Horn, little little Chris. I'm, I'm, I'm Alec Greg Davis, and he's Alex Horn. That'll be yeah. amazing. Oh, <laughs> little Chris, I'm gonna stick up for you because you you join monsters every Monday, and you always say you're gonna watch the films we watch. I bet you don't, but that's all right. Yeah. You're still there. I think yep. Chris is actually taller than me. <laughs> Damn the oh, man! I find that very hard to believe. <laughs> Sorry, we'll, I find we'll, that very hard to we'll, believe. We'll, we'll trick him on Monday as well. We'll take a few uh, a few inches off him. Uh, not too well, I'll take them a few inches, Chris, but still. Oh, uh, oh <laughs> gosh. <laughs> but yes, who, Empire, Empire after, Records. Who, Empire Records. Who, after <laughs> watching this, really did want to work in a record store? Like, uh, did they generally think that was what work and life yes. no, was going to be like? Yes. No, I didn't actually. I applied to HMV so many times after I applied to Our Price, I applied to Music Zone, mm-hmm. everything. Right. I just, I just of the opinion that they didn't know what they were missing. No. Say the one I wanted I to work in was Blockbuster. Oh uh, yeah, I could get, I could see you working in Blockbuster. You All don't want to rent films. this movie. You don't want to watch this one. <laughs> you want to watch the Goonies. You have to take the Goonies home. Everyone watches the Goonies. Everybody gets the Goonies. <laughs> <laughs> there are more films the Goonies. Get the Goonies. <laughs> they will be like, so it's in the nineties, so there'll be someone hanging, hanging in the flyers outside, going, "Stay away from this man. <laughs> He'll just give you the Goonies." <laughs> Goonies, motherfucker. <laughs> Goonies never say fucking die. <laughs> Oh, that's a sketch we're going to have to do now. Like I said, just me standing there. Like, like, go out into pubs and trying to sell people copies of the Goonies. But then you've got some like counter protest on the other side going, stay away, stay away. It's Someone stand- else trying to sell like Back to the Future, that would be me. <laughs> stand By Me is a better coming of age movie. No! Um, but yes, we're not talking about the motherfucking in this one, in the, in the Back to the Future now. But, yeah. I'll tell you what though, Sammy, mm-hmm. um, a lot of the events in the movie were based on real life events as well. Oh, Tower Records, isn't it? Yeah, it was based they, on just, Tower Records. The script writer, what was her name? Carol Hiking and then. Yeah, they were based on her experience working at Tower Records. All right, I did not know that. Interesting. It can be real life. Right. To say that though, I think working in a record store in America than working in a record store in the UK is going to be a completely different experience. Yeah. See, this is it. This is the whole. This is America selling me dreams. I can't fucking have. Yeah. It's the whole mm-hmm. save by the bell shit all over again, man. Mm-hmm. I'm sick of it. It's it's always interesting because you get this movie and then you get the High Fidelity is another one where they work in a record I... store where for High Fidelity is interestingly a British a British author's book, <clears throat> but it's been adapted for an American audience. Um, it yeah, no, it's 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 very yeah. good. It's it's basically. Well, what we start the podcast at the start, it's basically just like a top five movie. It's yeah. basically him telling them his top five uh, records <laughs> or top, top five uh, moments, top five relationships. It's like, to be honest, when we start the podcast, you should have watched that movie. <laughs> Possibly. I mean, I did cut the top five thing was something I came up with, with mm. but I'd never actually seen it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh well, it, it, it's a, it's still a, not seen it by the way. I'll get a review out of that one soon because I do like it. Yeah, Even you, it, should, it, it you should, you should, because if it, it, it's it's the you know the starting point of the podcast was based around that movie, I really should fucking watch it. Ant loves it, so it hasn't aged wouldn't... well with. Let's see how they treat the women in the movie, but again, that's just 
of the but time. But I can choice. always, but exactly, I can always put myself in a place where we're in that time. You know what I mean? Like yeah. progression has happened. I can, I can understand that. And it was the film that we learned that Jack Black can sing. Mm. Oh, hey man, anything with Jack Black, I just fucking love that man. <laughs> If he can make me love a Britney Spears song, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Stop being toxic. Why isn't Jack back in Empire Records? <laughs> Stop being toxic, at Sammy. No, he, sa- he did. He sang a really good Britney Spears song. No I know. Saying. I'm taking the piss because it's a Britney yeah. Spears song. Oh, I don't know that. <laughs> what? <laughs> Oh, that was a that was an over the head moment. It's like totally uh, wasted on it's Sam. It's like Sammy, <laughs> Sammy is Drax now. It's over like there. no, it will not go over my head. I will catch it. Uh, <laughs> I will get it. <laughs> I ain't no Drax. So, <laughs> so why do you think this movie didn't do as well as it did? As you said, it flopped bit, big style at the cinema. Why? Why do you think that is? Was it the Martin campaign? Because let's be honest, I don't know. Th- there wasn't very many posters. Like it's it's the same poster when you look at when you. Like, because I know when I do the podcast, I do like uh, a little bit of a graphic with loads of images and yeah. stuff as well. And finding high res, decent looking images for this movie was fucking hard. Like yeah. there was there was nothing like kind of like was... iconic or like photograph worthy. Like, I think yeah. the dialogue stands quite, out more. Quite low budget, wasn't it? Mm. Yeah. Well, um, and I think in the nineties, so it was probably competing with a lot of mm-hmm. you know well, large. What, what year was it? Ninety five. Ninety five. Mm-hmm. 95 let's have a look oh, movies what, yeah what else did we have in 95 but so in 1995 we had oh good god that's the absolute shittest of the could have come up with a better pick than that congo congo <laughs> okay. um, terrible film. you had you had billy madison ace right. ventura bad boys get shorty major pain a fucking great film <laughs> um yeah the 95 or oh, braveheart there you go braveheart right. uh, yeah you've mm-hmm. got yeah, the the, the Jumanji. Mm. Uh, first night. Yeah, so you're competing with a lot of big hitters, aren't you? Um, mm, yeah. Well, you know, well, to be fair, I mean, there's a lot of films like that in the '90s that didn't make it when they came out, but then just became like really, you know, cult favorites. You know, mm-hmm. like The Crow and stuff like that. Do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? That wasn't particularly massive when it came <clears> out, but it became a cult favorite. Um, no, definitely. I think Army of Darkness as well, as well was around about the mm-hmm. same yeah, time. Right. Um, I know. Like if you, I've just been seeing the budget for this movie as well. Ten million. You know how much it took on the US box office? One. Three hundred thousand. Um, <laughs> so, so yeah, it's oh. making a massive loss. Yes. <laughs> so you can understand why there wasn't much marketing at all. It yeah. wasn't a big campaign. But it probably is, I, That's sad. Yeah. But do you know what? It's oh. not at the same time because I love the fact that I love the fact it exists in the first place, but that it's also it's ours. It feels like it's ours. Yeah. And that it isn't a mass like this mm-hmm. huge mass production that everyone else owns or has, it belongs to me and me alone. And mm-hmm. I love that feeling about this movie. I yeah. thought of something else that might have gone to like the teenage market as well at the time, the craft. Right. Absolutely. The craft yeah. because uh, she was because, in it, wasn't she? Yeah, yes. Robin Tooney shaved her head for this, but then had to wear a wig, wig in the didn't she? The yeah. fucking <laughs> awful lace front in that movie is absolutely <laughs> horrific. Don't I'm get Sammy watched... started on the lace front. I'm sick of this <laughs> going on about the lace front. <laughs> never watch the craft on a fucking 4K HD television because Jesus Christ, do you see <laughs> the lining of that lace front? It's an awful wig. And how Sorry. scary! And how scary it is the craft hasn't even come up in any conversation for us to do a, a talk. And, on. and I, really, no, it really hasn't, and I don't mm. know why. Because well, that needs but, to be fixed. Yeah, <laughs> we <can't>. might have. <laughs> we're kind of, we're kind of se- well, settled January we could, now. We could, settled ja- what? We've got like a full list of films till January now. They've got December. I mean, the- the Craft was an iconic film for me, yeah. Sam, Claire, and Nikki. <laughs> we were like the we were like the four witches. Of the I'm craft. not having yet all yet all them four hags on there at the same time. Not a chance. <laughs> I, I, I can't put up with them four bitches. Sorry. Uh, hey, <laughs> maybe like my oldest and bestest friends. <laughs> I, I, I would say this to their face. You know, I would. You would. <laughs> That's yeah. true. And then I would see Nikki take the side of it off. <laughs> yeah. Hundred percent. Ah, Claire would just laugh because yeah, she's Claire, too nice. Claire wouldn't do. Fuck Claire, off. Claire wouldn't. Claire wouldn't nice. even know what day it is. It's like, oh, no, have I popped out another too, baby yet? She's uh, too nice. She's too sweet. Leave her yeah. be. Bless her. So she doesn't watch us. I can slag her off if I want. No, she doesn't. Because she, she she's too busy up. having a 
a family and yeah. good shit. Out of the four of us, she grew up. <laughs> we just stayed where we were. I like that though. Oh. I'm happy with that. I can, I get to do podcasts because of that. <laughs> Bless you. Yeah, I'm so, eternally at college, Ray. Really. Do you think this movie would work in any decade that it was out though? Like if you if you put in any like things, I think no. it would work in the 80s quite well. I don't think. Yeah, it would be quite well. Yeah, and you'd obviously have to change the soundtrack. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think, I, I think because the soundtrack, is, I mean. The soundtrack makes the film, it heavily makes the film. Mm -hmm. So I think to put it in a different decade would depend on what songs you're using in yeah. the soundtrack. I think, again, just me being like devil's advocate here as well, I think this movie would have worked so much better if it came out 10 years later with the, the decline of record stores and becoming, mm -hmm. when like the physical media start becoming digital. And as you, as as we see now, when we look look around like the town centres or go shopping, there's very few actual stores that sell. Like, think I know there's a big thing for vinyl coming back because it's, but that's more eclectic, more for collectors. But you would have more of an uh, an elitist attitude towards it, which I think would be quite entertaining to watch, uh, because people who work in them type of stores. I always think, as you said, that like if you go back to the high fidelity phase where they've got like a high opinion of themselves, they they're better than the, like the customers that's in the store type thing. But mm. um, I think it would work well, like say in that time period, just focusing on saying the decline of retail sales and then the man coming in is get rid of the store to make it something different or make it like a uh like a like a car park or something like that that's what it seems to me <laughs> uh, thing. i think that would be an interesting take or a house in, uh, if like, you're in the <laughs> if you're in the uk they just want to turn everything I mean, into houses i mean technically you could make it about any store in the whole of sunderland <laughs> yeah sunderland town center that yes. is true i do miss the days of going to hmv and like making a beeline for the metal section and be stood in there for like i don't know how mm. long until i found anything mm -hmm. i was such a sucker for anything i remember yeah. getting into an argument with someone who I, I actually ended up working with years down the line and we became really good friends but he mocked me over my choice of cds because i bought the used <laughs> <laughs> and if he's listening he you're knows in... exactly who he is. Who is this? I'll tell you later. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> see, I'm naming people. I'm Sammy, 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 Sammy's like, naming, I'm, I'm, naming naming shame. Shame. <laughs> I'm not naming and shaming this person. Is it somebody I know? Uh, <laughs> you might do. We did. I ended. I mean, if I worked with them, you worked with them at some point. So, did Sammy maybe. sleep with them? Let's ask that no. question. Because <laughs> he's a very happily married man, and I'm very much, and so I'm very happily married too. And he is, his wife is a really good friend of mine too. I love and it when Sammy gets flustered. No, no, <laughs> she gets all defensive. Yes, I really do. That's my, it's my go-to defense. <laughs> Can I just address something in chat? Right. Mm. Because of the age the four of us are, I want to point out to Chris and Beth that the eighties were not fifty years ago. No, um, excuse me. I was I was born in the early eighties, and I am not fifty. <laughs> Same. Same. I was born in eighty three. Oh, Chris is going to get bread all over. What the fuck is the matter with you? <laughs> Chris is just well, laughing at laughing at these causing chaos now. He's just... <clears throat> sorry, sorry, audio listeners who are not seen this chat. Yeah, um, just just know we that... have to have to keep remembering that we have audio listeners too yeah. who have no fucking idea what's going on when we're referencing the chat. But yes, yes, for the audio listeners, I have a child on my knee. Yes. <laughs> She's Fun fact, to... for the audio listeners, I look way better. <laughs> <laughs> Picture Jessica Rabbit as a female. That's the... <laughs> yeah, yeah we'll a... stick with that. <laughs> <laughs> Megan Fox look alike, just put it that way. Oh, so... <laughs> when she was good looking, and not when she had all the work done. We will be starting... Uh, oh, hot take there. Uh, we will be <laughs> starting Emma's hot, uh, only fans soon as well, so please uh, <laughs> buy your tickets with us soon. Yeah. Um, I've, got, I've got to pay for holidays somehow. <laughs> but I know it's going to be a difficult one when I ask this question as well because I know we've got a few like, things. I know Sarah's got a list of stuff uh, to talk about as well. What rating would you give this now? Like now, because we've all watched it quite fresh. And again, take the mm. nostalgia fitness. I know it's hard to take the nostalgia oh, glasses so off. It, yeah, it's. Mm -hmm. 
I, I don't think I can get away from the, the nostalgia. Mm. And, no. you know, mm. for me, it's definitely still a five out of five. I, I can't, yeah. mm-hmm. I can't, I can't get away from the that. nostalgia. No. I've, um, I, w- I would have said like 10 out of five, to be honest, when I was about 15. <laughs> we, got, we got wrong off Jake yeah. for changing the ratio. So just yeah. keep it on the <laughs> one, two, three, four, five. I know. I know. <laughs> it's a, um, but yeah, I, I, I would give it a 4.5 now because just because it is just so 90s. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And it's kind of cringy in one way, but it's mm-hmm. so much great nostalgia for me. Yeah. That I yeah. can't really reduce it anymore. Yeah. I love cringe comedy though. Mm-hmm. So this just is totally up my street that even today I still sit there and go, oh, yes, cringe. And <laughs> I got to give it a five out of a f- five out of five. I would be lying to myself if I give it anything other than that. So, yeah. What about you, Emma? So, yeah, five out of five. I, I can't, I can't escape the nostalgia. I mm-hmm. just, I would it's... love to be able to put it down and walk away from the nostalgia, but I can't. There is a there is a handful of things that take me back to moments. Empire mm. Records is one of them. Mm-hmm. And in the same place, fucking two pints of lager and a packet of crisps <laughs> is right there with it. These them kind of moments there, they literally come hand in hand with each other. She knows what <clears throat> I'm talking about. That, okay. Just to, just to say though, anyone who doesn't know what we're, and any Americans <laughs> that's watching us or anything like that. That's not Sam talking about a TV show. That's just a pub order, what she normally gets when she goes to the pub. Um, <laughs> very, very much so. But the musical episode of that, it uh, literally comes. God, it's amazing. Mm-hmm. But this was, these are these are the stuff that we quoted, and it was mainly from the likes of Empire Records, Two Pines. Yeah. I can Friends. Na- friends. Uh-huh. Um, so it's always just, it's, it's, it's always going to take us back to such a good place. Yeah. We used to walk around quoting, like, Friends going, I'm not even sorry. <laughs> I'm going to shock you now. Cause, shock, cause... Me, shock me, shock me with that deviant behavior. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Sarah is on fire tonight. That was good time. See, that was, she was the other night when, when I was playing that scary game and she used to used uh, the sound alerts that made us shit me pants. Uh, <laughs> Get in, Sarah. <laughs> Why is that not? And the thing was, it was only the Peter Griffin. Ta-da! <laughs> oh, that, I've decided to, to complete that game, you have to play multiplayer. You can't do it one player. So... <laughs> I'll do it with you, but I'm not going to lie. If them dolls come running after us, I'm going to fucking shit myself. <laughs> um, I'm going to shock you. Uh, we'll come back to the game in a bit. Um, <laughs> I'm going to say it's a five for me because I'm notoriously harsh for Martin. But the reason being, if I'm going to base it on like past Martins and stuff, there is absolutely nothing I would change in this movie. There was no. nothing I would leave out. There was nothing I would add to it. Um. It tells a story. It doesn't overcomplicate oh. it. It's got interesting characters. Um, the songs are amazing. It doesn't try and be too clever with the songs as well because it could have went, oh, uh, here's a Pearl Jam song, here's a Nirvana song and stuff like that. Yeah. Try and be all yeah. uh, hip and cliched and stuff like that. It used songs that set the mood, songs that told the story, and it it's just a film that makes you smile. And... When yeah. you want to watch a movie, you don't want things to be overcomplicated at times. Like, fair enough. Yeah. If you're having a day yeah. where you want to be challenged, watch Inception, watch Sh- Shutter Island. Oh, uh-huh. um, this oh, one is a her. this is a movie that you just watch just for enjoyment. And yeah, and it, as simple as it is, that's what movies are about. I absolutely agree. It's something yeah. that you can switch switch your brain off and just watch. It's mm-hmm. an easy watch, a no brainer, and. Nine times out of ten, that's the kind of films I like to watch. Yeah, it's, yeah. I, just, like, I want to be able to escape and not I have love, to use my brain for once. Mm-hmm. I just love a movie that can take us back to like some of the best times of my life. Like, I'm not saying like I am peaked and that was it, <laughs> but I have fond, fond memories what? of. We'll go on. What I was going to say, you, you're saying you haven't peaked. You've got fucking carpal tunnel syndrome in your wrist. Believe us, Pet, you've, you've peaked. That that ship's gone long ago. Yeah, we're all old now. <laughs> I'll have a warm embrace purposely so no one can see how old I am. <laughs> go on. Get, 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 God, show your strong, show your strong hand. <laughs> I'm having a moment until you're really fucking bringing that shit up. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy and I want his crumb. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, well, you're going to lower the tone. <laughs> Why are you here again? Because <laughs> you invited me. <laughs> to be fair, though. I feel like it's going to be the last time she does. <laughs> Sammy keeps saying, Emil, come on, she'll show off her massive chebs, but then she never does. It's always disappointing. Uh, but yeah. Never. <laughs> ever. Ever. Mentioned Again, them. I don't want to step into like you know, make it pornography. I don't want to get you shut down. It's fine. Basically, might, well, might get a few extra views. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> uh, That'll Nick... be one way to increase the uh, subscribes. Yes. Please <laughs> like and subscribe. Two, Emma's, uh, two thumbs up from Emma's uh, boobs. Uh... They might get a bit disappointed though if they start subscribing, and then the next time they try and tune in, it's like. Trekking up north, <laughs> <laughs> or Lee. They're, they're, ne they're never disappointed with the frosted Probably. tip goodwill um, <laughs> and a beautiful yeah, man true. that is uh, our captain. But yes, um, just just uh, laughing me head off now. Uh, where where do we go with this? Where do we this, go this, this whole... from here? <laughs> You've gone wrong. <laughs> this podcast has just gone all over the place, but I love the chaotic energy of it because it is just Empire Records uh, yeah. all over. Yes. It really is. <laughs> Could you imagine the main members of Nerdy Up North working in a record store? No. Oh, oh, let, 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 <laughs> go on, Sarah. You, you can now designate our roles oh, <laughs> in, in this record stop. So who's gonna be the who's gonna be the head guy? Who's gonna be the jaw? Who's gonna own and run the record stop? <laughs> now do I go with something just completely out there or do I actually do what I think? <laughs> go on, go with you what you go think. On. Go no, on, you sir. go, you go what you think. You know what? I think Sammy would make a good run store runner, store manager. Right. I think she would. Cool. <laughs> Sammy and keep us on track. Should keep us on Sammy, track. So Sammy's the Sammy's the man. So, so, so what roles is what, what role are you giving Goodwill? Is he is he the uh, the sales assistant at the front of the door to bring customers in? Well, yeah, you know you've got a who else? I mean, you know, get the captain out front. Who can resist him? <laughs> who can resist him, the captain? Yeah, who can resist the captain? <laughs> Chris Goodwill is Rex Manon. <laughs> no, no, no. No, Rex Manning is, is Graham. Let's be honest. No. We would have the Velvet Snatch mm. signing autographs yeah. to bring people uh, in. I Velvet would Snatch. certainly be putting um, Goodwill as Mark, mm -hmm. just for the sheer craziness that, that, that he can bring. Absolutely. You... I think I'd put Lee as Mark. I just put Fuck I, off. And he's got, he hasn't got the energy to be Lee's, war, Lee's, Lee's fucking Warren. That's who Lee is. <laughs> <laughs> Lee's just said, I'm going to blow you no. up. Please can I have a job. No, Lee. Chris is what Warren. Is his name? Lee is, what's his face, man? AJ Burko. Burko, Burko. <laughs> Lee is Burko. <laughs> oh, well, who's going to be Eddie then? Who's going to be my M uh, MVP? Oh. Oh, um, Jake. Mm, Jake. Jake every time. Jake, that, that's a good yeah. shot, actually. Yeah, Jake. Jake could yeah. be Eddie. Yes. Because Jake. Jake is Jake is such the voice of reason. He's such a sweetheart. So yeah, mm -hmm. Jake is steady. Hell of that. So who the fuck am I? Am I Lucas? Am I causing the chaos? Am I the you man with the plan? The I'm the yeah. man with the plan. <laughs> yeah. Just, just watch everything Michael, happen. So <laughs> it's so funny that when Michael's name gets called, he comes in the chat and he hasn't got a fucking clue <laughs> what's going on. To be fair, though, if it, Michael has a very eclectic taste in movies. He's, I don't think he's ever seen Empire Records, so we could be just telling them to oh. Michael. But um, I think, yeah, I... I I wish I was the man with the plan. As most time, I just go with the flow and just see what happens. Uh, fuck you, Facebook. Just saying, uh, <laughs> not, not bitter at all. Uh, so yes, um, I'm trying to think of who would be the live Tyler. Um, <laughs> trying not to upset Which anyone. Which member is currently on speed? <laughs> uh, yeah, when it comes down to the, the, the female characters, yeah. you don't particularly want to fucking upset anyone. <laughs> <laughs> We're basically um, choosing who is the so, slut and who's on drugs. Yeah, who's so the slut and who's, who's, who's the speedhead? I mean, I, I'm going to start, start upsetting people. That. Let's see. Uh, Adam, Adam's the slut. Adam's the one that everyone <laughs> sleeps with uh, or tries oh, to I'm mount. Glad you went with Adam there, mate. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we'll we'll go with. Um... <laughs> I'm sorry, Kelly, but Kelly is probably the speed freak. <laughs> <laughs> wow. just, just saying have you, have you tried to keep up with Kelly mid-conversation just saying uh, but yes so yeah any oh, notes or anything gosh. that we haven't talked about though Sarah because I know you've made your notes I think we've covered most of what I've got on here to mm. be honest. it's one of those films you can talk about 
a lot, but you can't really drill down too much to. Unless, yeah, unless you go from like start to finish of the movie, yeah. and then it's like yeah. it just gets it just but gets if, a bit. If you're gonna wild. do that, go and fucking watch the movie. But yes, yeah, that's true. Go and watch yeah. it. I I think... have, did you? Did anyone I mean, else have trouble finding it, by the way? No, it's no, I just no, dodgy or not. DVD. DVD. Dodgy. Oh, fuck <laughs> I, guess I really don't. And I had to find it on a channel. This free this free service thing. I don't even know what it's called. And it had 50 billion adverts in it to the point where I was like, this is not a long film. Why is it taking as many three hours to watch it? Um, it. I watched it on the dodgy stick in 4K, which I don't even think it is out in 4K, but there was a 4K know. copy. Um, I couldn't find any links whatsoever. And believe you me, I fucking looked. Yeah. And I could not find any links. I ended up having to watch it on this free fucking thing. It's, I'm going to say it's something that's going to totally blow your mind. You probably not not. You'll, I'll have to probably <laughs> set it up for you. VPN, Sam. It will change your life. Yeah. When are you coming to mine next? <laughs> oh, there's an invite. Do you, know, do you know how easy it is to set up a VPN? Just search for VPN. I do you know who you're talking to. <laughs> yes. Yeah, if, me, if me mum can do it in China, you can do it. <laughs> your mum's a cleverer lady yeah. than I am. <laughs> I'm a 60s movie. man. I think this movie gets to a point though where you would just end up quoting it at each other. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's it's just such a quotable movie. It's yeah. it's as I said, it's an emotional roller coaster. It's everything that you want from like as you said, a feel good movie. It ticks all the right boxes at the right times and it's got a banging soundtrack. What more can you yeah. want? Yeah, it does. It does deal with absolutely everything, and the soundtrack has got a little something for absolutely all mm -hmm. tastes. Mm -hmm. And it just falls. Everything that soundtrack is so perfectly placed. Everything yeah. falls at the right moment. Yeah. And if you're a pervert like Lee, it's got Liv Tyler in broad bra niggers. So there, just saying. And Manny Zellweger in a very very short skirt. And you see her bum quite a lot when she's in the apron as well. So that's quite nice. You do. Yeah. I forgot about the apron. Yeah. She has no ass. I saw an arse, I liked it. Oh, <laughs> well. And Robert Shuni's not so bad in this film because yes. we've not mentioned Deb once. Oh, yeah. oh she is beautiful. Oh, but she, she is beautiful. And she does the best Sinead O'Connor impression to date. It's fine. Well, Sinead O'Rebellion. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the only thing I was going to mention, was she being nice or being a complete arsehole when she was giving out the badges? She's being honest. Right. Yeah. I think that's, that's Deb's a good... problem. Mm -hmm. She's mm. she's honest, right? Because sometimes honestly, the truth hurts. Yeah, and in the nineties, not many people could handle handle honesty, but yeah. Yeah. So the film is called Empire Records. Lee's adding it to yeah. his list. That oh, was it. I mean, especially gosh. with that scene where she's kind of like hiding in the listening booth, and Joe comes to find her, and she's kind of like so just so brutally honest with him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But at oh. the at the end of it, when she turns around and he he goes, "You're doing a good job, Deb." Yeah. And she he walks away, and she goes. Well, I feel better. And I don't know <laughs> if she's being sarcastic or she yeah, generally does feel better because was... she did look a little bit taken aback by the fact that she was getting told she was yeah. doing a good mm -hmm. job. Yeah, it was very Daria, shall we say. Like, mm -hmm. if, like if, if anyone's watching like an old 90s cartoon, Daria is very much I the feel Daria. of this movie. <laughs> I used to get called Daria. Surprise, oh. surprise. It's because you're a hot nerd. Deal with it. It's fine. It's because I wear glasses. Because way back in the 90s, anybody who wears gla wore glasses was then compared to any kind of star that wore glasses or even cartoons. So Daria, um, what else did I get? I used to get, remember that song? Is it Lisa Loeb? That, um, I can't remember the song she did. But oh, she was... um... Well, uh, my question is, was it Foo this, Fighters or was it ACDC? That's my repertoire. Sorry. You're saying Lisa Law. <laughs> well, uh, you got called cool names because when I, I wore glasses as a kid and I used to get called fucking four eyes all the time. Oh, I always used to get called Penny Crayon. I missed you. <laughs> yes, that was the song. To be fair, though, this is like the first podcast where all of us are wearing glasses. This is the four eyed podcast. <laughs> four eyed <laughs> but glasses are cool now, man. I used to get <laughs> what you can't fucking see, and it's like, no, can I? That's why I'm wearing fucking glasses, you dipshit. Yeah, now no, I have duh. to wear fucking. Now I'm fucking 40 year old and I have to wear very focals, so no, I can't. Yeah. <laughs> oh, have you got very focals? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's using a carpet tunnel, tunnel <laughs> very <laughs> focals and a bad back. <laughs> Jesus, when did you turn 90? <laughs> Sammy, 
<laughs> what happened when, he, when I turned the day before I turned 40? I think I messaged him and I was like, I think my hips gone. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Sam. Oh. <laughs> Sammy, I'll make you feel a little bit better. I actually do need very photos. I just refuse to get them. I, I have them, Sarah. I take my glasses off to read what's on my screen. I'm only putting my glasses on for the podcast because I think I look better with them on. What's Have the demo? Have you trying to read with very focals? They're fucking horrible. I wonder what the demographic of people who try and listen to this podcast is. What age we are you aiming for? It's like We're scaring, just, scaring away all the young It's good. <laughs> coming coming back uh, for the sixty year olds uh, to make them feel younger. To reference oh, one of uh, the Game and Up North podcasts, like if we were on the Grand Theft Auto or, or soundtrack or thing, it'd be like now on the old channel. All. We've got Daddy up north. <laughs> I don't want to take my glasses off because my makeup's like halfway down my face. Now, so. Sorry, but, just you're doing, you're doing, you're doing, your, night, you're doing your 90s impression. You've just been Eric Draven for a bit as well. That's right. <laughs> oh, oh. We've learned a lot today, haven't we, kids? Oh. <laughs> a reminder of the fun the 80s were nearly 50 years ago. Fuck but, yeah, but fuck rem- you, Chris. But, but, but remember, my cool hip. Monster podcast is after tomorrow. <laughs> Shit, I'll have to upload that. Thanks for reminding us. Yeah. So, yeah. so, yeah, my cool, my cool <laughs> hip monster podcast where we talk all about Georgia Romero um, <laughs> is out tomorrow. Okay. It's it, it's it because we realize we actually want to do these movies as part of the podcast. We're like, so we can't go into great detail. So, this is just a little intro into the life of George A. Romero where we try our hardest to stay away from some of the greatest horror movies ever made <laughs> with great difficulty <laughs> oh, we haven't even done a show on the dead episode yet that... oh wow, we have so... oh we have it just got took away mm-hmm. we've done the tri- Cornetto trilogy oh, uh, oh, you, you, technically you this. can't see it but if you subscribe to our membership you can <laughs> see it in the membership see section <laughs> mm, look at him look at him look at him look at the plugs now yes look we do have I think there's about thirty episodes that uh, are not on the new on the uh, the YouTube channel that you can the see. Oh, the nudie up channel. Oh, the channel. The fucking all the names. The nudie up north YouTube channel. But if you do subscribe, you can see them in retrospect. But uh, let's be honest, some of them are. I, mean, right. <laughs> I know. There's a reason they're in there. <laughs> <laughs> Oosh. Sammy doesn't normally get bitchy. That's fine. No, I don't. But I've had enough. <laughs> Um, I've been called old. I'm not sure how to take this. I don't like it when she defends herself. <laughs> oh, it's because she's not about with Dan now. She's like getting all get, 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 oh, like, I angry. Think I'm hard as fuck because I'm not about with Dan. <laughs> I, get a, I get a hard southern mate and that stuff. It's fine. Um, <laughs> oh, no, I, I, I'm scared of mentioning him now. It's like shit. Dan's gonna fucking kill us. <laughs> I'm gonna see her in a few weeks. She'll brew us all over. But yeah. Um, so yeah, so monsters are tomorrow at seven o'clock. Yes. Um, we do have like a few twitching uh, through the week. We've got uh, Goodwill probably be doing something really weird and so like with one of his personalities. Oh, it's not, it's on... not Goodwill. It'll be one of his cousins oh, that'll be joining us. Will, so. probably. Truck will oh. probably will be joining oh, us. Or might be Wheels will does one like which whichever yeah. one of his personality or. I mean, yeah. I'll I'll find out, and the schedule goes up every Tuesday for what we're what is happening mm-hmm. within the Twitch and podcasting world. So you'll be kept well informed. Cool. Just to say, to go back as well, like last week we did have a few good episodes, that, uh, not more than a few. Um, the Gigs Up North came out with uh, a yes. great episode with Babes from the Crypt. That was such a, uh, like a nice, uh, informative episode. Uh, that's on the YouTube channel. Um, also, um, we had the Ramblecast review of the news. Jake give you the motherfucking news, bitches. Uh, he really uh, fucking <laughs> did. Such a brilliant episode of him and Adam. Loved yep. it. And an amazing episode of Trekking Up North where... Um, um, like I said, they had a, a mark on where they reviewed Search for Spock. And uh, again, so much fun. I enjoyed that episode. I watched it uh, live. Um, again, can't hype Trekking Up as much. Like I said, it is one of the best things that's on podcast. Just saying. Um, just saying? Just saying. Their episode, just their episode goes <laughs> out on... No, no, I'm saying it is one of the, one <laughs> of the best. There is other best ones as well. I've, how many times have I said that Monsters is my favourite, Sammy? So put your face it's away. Just, it's just nice to be here sometimes, you know. It's just nice to be reminded. Just because right. Dan's oh. not here. I'm so, domestic later, guys. Yeah, Come I'm, on. Mummy and Daddy's kicking off, don't worry. Uh, <laughs> um, 
<laughs> they're back next Friday where they're reviewing an episode of Deep Space Nine. So Graham will be very happy. Um, <laughs> I don't. I think Lee will be uh, streaming twitching on uh, Thursday, Thursday, I believe. Yeah, and I, he and I bl- Thursday. And gaming will be doing something on Wednesday. Uh, so again, if you're anywhere at Nerdfest tomorrow, come and see us. We will have all have stickers. So if you extra... <laughs> doesn't mean you're getting some, but we'll have some. <laughs> um, if, you're, if you're extra nice to us, we have got a lot of shiny ones as well. So you might, if you're one of the lucky few, you will get a shiny sticker. Either monsters, gigs, uh, nerdy, trekking, uh, gaming. We have a lot of stickers to give away tomorrow. Uh, please get yourself down to Nerdfest. That'll be fun. Um, it'll be interesting to see a few people tomorrow um, and beat the shit out of Chris. Uh, we will be back uh, on Sunday. Well, we won't Sunday. be. Uh, we well, no, I'm, I'm coming to that. I've, God, she's already plugged monsters about fifteen times. It's all right. <laughs> Next Sunday we aren't live. Spoiler, uh, we are recording the episode. I mean, probably, probably going to get away with it, but <laughs> yeah, uh, we are recording the episode. But we are talking about the amazing Batman movie that is Batman Returns, the best Batman movie. And spoilers, I'm not going to be on it. No. Oh, I know. And it, and the best part about it is he's not going to be in the background either. So I'm not going to get super nervous. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, oh, he's not. Go rogue. Yeah. Oh, it's going to go mental. Yeah. You don't know what he's going to do. His head's going to explode. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the ones where I've been on before, I've been in the background saying, see this! Oh, Ask this oh, question! Do you know what it is? <laughs> There's one episode in particular I can think of, which I don't particularly want to mention who was on it, but I can just I could just feel him in the back. I could feel him in the background, and I was like, I know what he's saying. I know what he's not saying now. And I was like, I know what he's saying, and I was like, I need to do something. I was so nervous. <laughs> Yep, that's fine. Not that I have never done this before <laughs> or anything. It's, it's all right. Everyone knows I'm Sammy's safety blanket. It's fine. I make really her feel not. safe. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so and as 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 Sammy will point out as well, the amazing, the wonderful, the best horror podcast that is on the internet is out tomorrow. Join oh, Sammy nice. and Dan for Monsters Up North for all your best horror gossip and, no- and knowledge. Please listen to it. Or Sammy does beat us. Uh, she was, <laughs> but yes, was that was that all right? Was that up to the level no, that you no, wanted? Really That's fine. Right. Anything else, guys? Anything you guys no, want to plug? I'm all, oh. I'm all good. And um, just to say that the audio for this episode and all other episodes will be out on Tuesday, and a schedule is up every Tuesday, so you know what's going on within Twitch and YouTube world for that week. Just, yes. just get it out there. Remember, <laughs> like, share, subscribe. Thanks. <laughs> yes, and follow us on whichever platform you like. But please, as we're as we're, all of them. Yes, but, all but, of them. Yeah. but please leave us a comment. Like yeah. our YouTube channel gets kind of views, but no one fucking comments on it. Say something nice or even say something horrible. I'll tell you what, yeah. and that's weird. Graham's Tash gets more comments about than our episodes. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <clears throat> if you can, we also obviously leave us comments on the YouTube channel, but if you can, give us some notification if you are listening on audio to let us know that you're there. It would mm. be really nice to know who's listening to us. Um, ha- liking the podcast or rating it or reviewing it, it kind of gets the algorithm moving and gets other people to find us who only just listen to audio. So that would be a massive, massive help if you could. Yes. So guys, thank you for everyone who's been with us in the chat. Thank you, Emma, for joining us. Thank you for putting up with me shit. I know, like, see, I, I get away with a lot with you because I love you to bits. Might not say that, but I absolutely love her. Like, I, I, honestly, you are amazing. Sarah, it is always a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us and join us, Little Baba, as well, uh, making, a, make, making the youngest debut. debut of the yeah. littlest and youngest uh, member of the Nerdy Up North squad now. Uh, He's now, good. now had more He's appearances than Chris and probably is bigger than Chris as well. <laughs> so yes. Um, so same back time, same back channel. See you nerdy, everyone. Bye. Bye.